We use the word narcissist a lot to describe excessively self-centered, egotistic, and vain people. In psychology, there is a formal diagnosis called Narcissistic Personality Disorder, defined in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders as a pervasive pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy. Suffice to say, narcissists are people we want to avoid. So what is a narcissist really? And what on earth do you do when you find yourself in the clutches of one? After all, we all think we know a narcissist. The self-obsessed friend, the boastful boss, or the toxic ex. The thing is, you are probably right. We are living in a narcissism epidemic. Think selfies and the rise of social media. That means they are everywhere, and you probably have some narcissistic tendencies too. Today, we're going to talk about the three approaches you can take to deal with narcissists, whether that's a partner, a co-worker, or even a family member. Narcissistic people don't always seem toxic because they are so good at manipulation, so stick around to find out whether you are being taken advantage of and how to confront it. It can be really hard to get out when the narcissist is a sibling or parent, rather than a co-worker or partner you can leave behind. The good news is, they are not all beyond help. So let's begin with a whistle-stop tour of narcissism. We know that the most common traits are dismissiveness, entitlement, arrogance, and grandiosity. But what does this look like in real life? Well, it's a blatant disregard of people's boundaries. The need for constant praise and recognition, jealousy and bitterness when someone else is the center of attention, and unrealistic expectations of how other people should bend over backwards to cater to their needs. Overall, these qualities mean they end up sapping you of all your energy, like parasitic vampires. Unfortunately, all these villainous tendencies are often thinly veiled under a superficial mask of charm, gaslighting, and seduction, so you don't usually find out they are a narcissist in disguise until you are in too deep. In fact, most people come to the realization that the very qualities that attracted them were the narcissistic ones. They make great first impressions on job interviews and dates. Kept at a distance, narcissists can even be quite likable. After all, they are fun, charismatic, and might be genuinely good at what they do. If it is a friend you only see occasionally, then you might just benefit from the fun side, and at work they probably bring good results to your team. But like all things, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. It is easy to get pulled into the spider's web, and when you get this close, this dynamic can easily get very ugly, toxic, and damaging to your well-being. So when you are dealing with a narcissist, you can take a few different approaches. Strategic, reformation, or breakout. The strategic approach. A lot of the time, it isn't just as simple as removing the narcissistic person from your life because they could be a family member, co-worker, boss, or teacher. Narcissists are great at hiding in plain sight or gaslighting, which can make people feel like they're either going crazy or at fault. In this case, you need to deal with them strategically so that you can coexist in a civilized way without compromising your well-being and even benefit from the good parts without getting sucked into the exploitation and toxicity. By keeping our tips in mind, you will not only be able to tolerate them, but perhaps even ease the tension so that circumstances can genuinely improve. First and foremost, it's important to validate your own feelings. Consciously or unconsciously, narcissistic people can be antagonistic and really get under your skin by being undermining, attention-seeking, and interrupting. This is understandably frustrating when you are just trying to get things done and they are being disruptive. Giving yourself the room to acknowledge your feelings and where they are coming from will give you the strength and justification you need to do something about it. Next, try to figure out where this narcissistic behavior is coming from. A lot of people are deeply insecure with fragile egos, which is why they feel the need to make themselves appear superior using underhanded tactics. For example, they might constantly challenge your ideas to create controversy or challenge your authority. When you become aware of this, you can play them at their own game by giving them just enough attention to get them to settle down and focus on the matters at hand. Be careful though, because too much praise will fan their egocentric flames. 
but just enough will buy you some peace and quiet. If you are dealing with the type of narcissist who gets their thrills from making people squirm or suffer, you need to work on your poker face and remain positive. If they see that they are succeeding in ruffling your feathers, it will only encourage them to escalate their antagonizing behavior. You have to keep cool, calm, and collected without looking visibly flustered so they get bored and eventually stop the behavior. Similarly, try not to take yourself too seriously. It is easy to feel dejected and diminished in the presence of a narcissist, but that also means you are internalizing too much of someone else's behavior and making it about you. Sound familiar? That is a narcissistic trait. Instead, keep a sense of humor and call their bluff, meaning you just ignore them or even give them a laugh from time to time. You can use a strategic smile or a well-crafted joke to call light to a narcissist's behavior, rather than going into a full-blown confrontation or outright criticism. You can also use this strategy while other people are around because it's likely they will start to notice these problematic patterns and call them out too. Being around a narcissist can be really draining and reinforce a lot of misery. And if you can't avoid that person, you need to counter that negativity by focusing on your other healthy relationships and building a good support network. Only spend as much time as you absolutely need to around the toxic person and use all of your spare time to focus on self-care, rekindling old friendships and making new ones. Socialize more, explore new hobbies and classes, volunteer, just do something that puts you at ease and makes you feel positive. The Reformation Approach The strategic approach is great if you don't have to interact with them very often or for a short period of time. But if the narcissist is someone you have to be around a lot and often, then constantly exerting your energy on strategies to neutralize their behavior will be exhausting. In that case, you can try your best to help them. After all, the narcissist in your life might be someone you just can't avoid, or even someone you genuinely love and don't want to give up on. Ultimately, you owe it to yourself to confront the situation head on and stand up for yourself. When you feel yourself reaching breaking point, refrain from having an outburst which will please the narcissist. Instead, take the time to calm down and figure out what you're going to say in a well-reasoned, constructive manner. Be specific about how their behavior impacts you. Outline your boundaries about what is and isn't acceptable and how you expect to be treated going forward. Narcissists don't take criticism well, so initially you can try to be gentle and use the sandwich method by starting with something complimentary. For example, I really appreciate your enthusiasm, but when you put your ideas across like this, it may come across as discouraging. It is likely they'll be taken aback or fail to understand because narcissists struggle to see the defects in themselves. And even worse, they might understand but not care. If the gentle approach doesn't work, then consistency and firmness are key. You have to keep calling them out and reinforcing your boundaries when they step out of line. This is because self-absorbed people's entitlement overshadows other people's boundaries to the point where they don't even see them. So when you set boundaries, you have to be very clear about what they are and the consequences of crossing them. Consequences are important here because they will make the narcissistic personality stand up and pay attention when it affects them. You should also have to be prepared to carry out those consequences if needed. So think about them carefully, otherwise you won't be taken seriously. It might take some time, but reinforcing your position and standing up for yourself will make them think twice before they behave inappropriately around you. Narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder are exactly as the name suggests, a characteristic or personality trait rather than an actual illness. That means narcissism isn't something that is actually treatable or manageable because it is just who they are, but it can be controlled in some cases. For example, if someone genuinely wants help, it isn't that the narcissism will ever disappear, but with some self-learned self-awareness and management techniques, the narcissism can become more cognizant. This awareness combined with a true self-aspiration for healthy relationships means they will be better equipped to catch those entitled tendencies and self-centered thoughts. Therapy itself is a hurdle, 
As we have established, narcissistic people see a problem with everyone except themselves. That means they are probably the last people who would seek therapy, which ironically would be beneficial to cultivate some self-awareness. If you try to suggest counseling, you'll probably be met with a lot of resistance and even ridicule. But narcissistic people often have other issues like substance misuse, mental health problems, or personality disorders. You can base your suggestion for therapy using those issues, or even market it as something they can use to learn more about their favorite subject, themselves. Of course, at the end of the day, it's their duty and merely advice on your part. You can't make them do anything they don't want to, and it isn't your responsibility either. Usually, narcissists only seek therapy when they hit rock bottom and have major consequences as a result of their inappropriate behavior. It takes something deeply traumatic with a life-altering impact to jolt them into reality, like realizing they sabotaged their business or a relationship with toxic behaviors. If you were ever there to witness such a rarity, you can help them make progress and guide them towards taking ownership of their role in the conflict and chaos in their lives. In this sense, progress is possible, but don't be surprised if they go back to their old ways once they're back on their feet. Most importantly, remember that having issues does not excuse inappropriate or abusive behavior, and you shouldn't have to compromise your well-being. The Breakout Approach Regularly dealing with a narcissistic person will undoubtedly take a toll on your mental and physical health, so you need to recognize when it's just time to let go and save yourself. After all, what is the price of your sanity, especially if the narcissist refuses to get help? Narcissists are as unhealthy as they come, but they can be verbally, emotionally, or physically abusive. For example, being insulting, patronizing, humiliating, threatening, jealous, and accusatory. They might even blame you for everything that goes wrong, be controlling, monitor your movements, or try to isolate you. Their gaslighting can extend to telling you how you really feel, or should feel consistently projecting their own failings onto you, trivializing your opinions, or feeling and even outright denying obvious things. You might continue to tell yourself that every relationship has ups and downs, but take a look at our video on signs of unhealthy relationships. If a lot of it is unnervingly familiar, it's time to go. Sure signs you need to take the breakout approach immediately are if you are being verbally, emotionally, or physically abused, if you feel threatened, manipulated, and controlled, or if your mental health has been affected. If you have any symptoms of anxiety, depression, or even unexplained physical ailments, it's a sign that every cell in your body is literally screaming at you to leave. Dealing with this can be very isolating, so get as much support as possible from family and friends, your doctor, therapists, and support groups. You don't have to go through it alone. In the breakout approach, you have to accept that fixing them is not your responsibility, but maintaining your own well-being is. So there you have it, three ways you can deal with a narcissist. The strategic approach, the reformation approach, and the breakout approach. Which one will you be taking, and who's the biggest narcissist you have ever met? We'd love to hear your stories in the comments below. Whichever way you choose, remember to stay true to yourself. It's easy to lose your vision, sense of purpose, or goals when a narcissist is constantly diminishing you or trying to take the limelight. In reality, they can't force you to feed their entitlement or ego. It's up to you to decide which balance you want to take between staying on your path and pandering to the narcissist's needs. Using strategy, you can choose to coexist or apply reformation to attempt to help them or say enough is enough and use breakout to focus on yourself without any derailment. The main thing is that you don't allow them to infiltrate your world or define it. You have to put yourself first. Take charge and remind yourself of your achievements, strengths, and purpose without getting swallowed up in them. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be back soon with similar content. So subscribe for those and check out our other videos in the meantime.